Lorenzo Zanni and Asia Darushkavic. Uh, but uh, since I've already introduced Asia earlier, uh, I'll simply go over uh, Lorenzo's background. Uh, Lorenzo Zanni, he received his PhD in electrical engineering from Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Lausanne in 2017. And his research was uh, on power system monitoring, control and protection by using PMUs with a focus on state estimation and fault location. He is the co-founder and COO of uh, Zafiro Technologies, a Swiss company that is currently commercializing SynchroGuard, uh, the first monitoring and automation solution for distribution grids fully based on phaser measurement units, which integrates several smart grid functions such as real-time real state estimation, optimal control of distributed energy resources and fault location. So with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Lorenzo. Thank you, Professor Abur. Hello to everybody. I'm uh, Lorenzo Zanni from Zafiro Technologies, and I'm glad to present this paper that describes PMU-based linear state estimation in a real power system, which is the sub-transmission network of Lausanne, Switzerland. This research was done in collaboration with the Swiss Federal Institute of Lausanne, in Switzerland, the Northeastern University in Boston, the and the local utility of Lausanne, and was co-founded by the Swiss Federal Office of Energy. First, I would like to describe the general structure of a wide area monitoring system, which is composed of four main blocks. A set of phasor measurement units measuring voltage and current phasors, a time dissemination technology that synchronizes and phase aligns these phasors to a common UTC reference, a telecom network capable of transmitting the PMU data, and finally, a phasor data concentrator that aggregates, decapsulates, and time aligns the various PMU data flows. The phasor data concentrators also send phasors to a real-time state estimator that provides a reliable state of the grid to monitoring, control, and even fault location applications. These applications are beyond the scope of this paper, even though the fault locator relying on this technology is already used by the utility of Lausanne. Now, let's focus on the state estimation part. This slide shows the advantages of a PMU-based state estimator compared to traditional state estimators based on standard SCADA measurements. So first, PMU measurements have the, has, have the, the advantage of being time synchronized, guaranteeing that all measurements from different locations refer to the same time window. Second, the function that links measurements with states is linear, thus eliminating all the convergence problems and increasing dramatically the computation time. And third, we do not need a reference phase angle as phase angles are directly measured by PMUs. And now I leave the floor to Asia Dervis Kadish from EPFL that is going to describe the implementation of the WAMPS system in the real grid of Lausanne. Uh, thank you, Lorenzo. Um, the topology of the sub-transmission network is presented in this figure. So as you can see, it consists of seven buses and 10 lines, uh, overhead and cable, and it is a meshed topology. Uh, we installed 15 PMUs that estimate the three-phase nodal voltage and current flow synchrophasers at both ends of each line, uh, leading to high measurement redundancy. Uh, voltage and current signals are acquired by means of conventional potential and current transformers of accuracy classes between 0 0.2 and 0 0.5. The PMUs are based on the national instruments uh, grid and automation system and implement the enhanced interpolated uh, DFT synchrophasor estimation algorithm that is presented in the bottom reference which is compliant with uh, protection class requirements with a maximum total vector error of 0.0x%. 
Mm, the system is also equipped with eight digital inputs that monitor uh, the real-time status of the breakers and therefore um, the grid topology. Uh, the PMUs stream the synchrophasers with a reporting rate of 50 frames per second and are characterized by a mean PMU reporting latency of 44 milliseconds. The PMUs stream the data uh, through the legacy optical fiber network of uh, SIL, uh, so the utility of Lausanne, uh, through a dedicated uh, virtual LAN. Uh, the bottom graph uh, shows the aggregated end-to-end -end latency of PMU data that was measured over a 24-hour test across all PMUs. Um, here we refer to the latency uh, between the data frame timestamp, um, therefore the moment a specific event uh, happens uh, in the power system, and the arrival time of the same data frame to the PDC. Um, as it can be seen, the mean value um, is of 45 milliseconds and the data delivery is uh, quite uh, deterministic. Uh, there are very few outliers that are characterized by a maximum measured value of 163 uh, milliseconds. Uh, the proposed uh, WAMS architecture uh, also embeds a dedicated phasor data concentrator uh, whose details are presented in the bottom reference. Um, briefly, the PDC collects data from all collected PMUs, then time aligns this stream of data and then um, sends the time-aligned data sets to the supplied applications once a specific uh, PDC wait time has elapsed. Um, in the current implementation, we set the PDC wait time to 60 milliseconds because that value allows us to collect a consistent number of outliers uh, without sacrificing the timing needs of the overlying uh, state estimation process. And back to you, Lorenzo. Thanks, Asia. I'm back to describe the last piece of the WAMS architecture, uh, which is the linear state estimation. Concerning the algorithm, we implemented two methods, the widely used linear weighted least squares and the least absolute value. The flow chart that you see in this slide depicts the various stages of state estimation. First, the raw synchrophasor measurements undergo some plausibility checks. In parallel, the topology is created thanks to the breaker and switch statuses that are streamed by PMUs. Then topology and measurements, including also zero injections and pseudo measurements, are used to see if the grid is observable. And finally, the state estimator processes the topology and the measurements to output the estimated state. If the, the linear uh, WLS algorithm is used, also the measurements uncertainties are taken into account in the measurement noise covariance metrics. And the bad data processor identifies possible bad data. If a bad data is identified, they are removed and the state is computed again. In this slide, we go deeper in the implementation details of the state estimation. The plausibility checks basically remove measurements with gross errors by analyzing the relevant PMU fields, such as the loss of synchronization. The topology processor was already explained before. And finally, the observability analysis checks the rank of the metrics H, which is linking measurements with state variables. If metrics H is not full rank, the state estimation is stopped temporarily. Then regarding the measurement noise covariance metrics, which is used only by the linear WLS, it is known that uh, it, it, it contains the measurement uncertainties. The predominant uncertainties in our case are linked to the sensors, namely uh, PTs and CTs, because as you can see from the table on the right, the PMU errors are order of magnitude lower than the sensor errors. And finally, the standard deviation of the measurements are computed as one third of the error limits provided by the standards. Concerning uh, the data processing, we used uh, the well-known largest normalized residual test. And now 
uh, you can see the advantages and drawbacks of uh, linear state estimation uh, with uh, uh, weighted least squares and with the least absolute value. The linear weighted least squares minimizes the weighted residuals and as a closed form solution. Whereas the LAV as a, is a constrained one norm optimization problem implemented as a linear programming problem. The linear WLS is easy, fast, and widely used. And uh, the LAV uh, has also several advantages, such as automatic uh, bad data rejection without as the need of a separate bad data processing. It also doesn't need the definition of the measurement noise covariance metrics and is not affected by leverage measurements. Its drawback is mainly the usually higher computation time. Finally, uh, here you can see the results of state estimation in the real sub-transmission grid of Lausanne. In the upper graph, you see the voltage estimates at one node. And in the bottom graph, the estimates of a branch current. Three state estimators are used. The linear uh, WLS with a bad data processor, which is the green curve. The linear WLS with the largest normalized residual bad data processor, which is the red curve, and the least absolute value, which is the pink curve. Concerning the voltage estimates, the three estimators give similar results that are close to the measurements. Instead, concerning the current estimates, the linear WLS and the LAV give similar results close to the measurements, but the linear WLS with the data processor, which is the red curve, often jumps from a value to another because uh, the bed data processor identifies and removes several bed data at each time step. These phenomena can be due either to real gross errors in the measurements or to errors in the line parameters. Let's find out now what, what was the reason. So first, I want to say that thanks to the very high measurement redundancy, we could analyze the current at the two terminals of each line and see that they are all coherent with each other. So we started to suspect that the cause could be the parameter errors. Indeed, uh, we compared, as you can see here, the normalized residuals of the linear WLS from the real grid that you see in the top graph and from a simulation that you see in the bottom graph. In the simulation, we added many different combination of random errors of plus or minus 5% to the line parameters. You can see that with only plus or minus 5% in the line parameters, the residuals obtained in the simulation are similar to those obtained with real field data. And therefore, most likely, the bad data processor was wrongly flagging good measurements as bad data because of line parameter errors. Uh, therefore, removing good measurements, the state estimates were diverging from the real grid states. And uh, we solved this problem by simply augmenting the bad data detection threshold of the largest normalized residual test. Um, we also assessed the timing performance of the overall state estimation process uh, in order to demonstrate the appropriateness of this tool to serve real-time power system applications. In particular, what we measure is the PMU latency, namely uh, the data frame arrival time in the PDC, the PDC latency, namely the time aligned data set push time, and finally, the state estimation computation time. Uh, the figure shows the cumulative distribution function of these latencies. Um, as you can see, in uh, the PDC enables the cancellation of the latency variations that are introduced by the telecommunication network. Indeed, you see that the data are collected by the PDC between 48 and 40, and 40 milliseconds in blue, uh, whereas time-aligned data sets are always sent to the state estimation process with a latency of 60 milliseconds in light blue. 
Um, then depending on the computational complexity of the adopted uh, uh, state estimation method, the final latency can vary widely. So as expected, the um, linear WLS in green is the fastest algorithm characterized by 0.5 milliseconds latency. Um, however, when coupled with a bad data processor, uh, such estimator becomes uh, the slower one in red. Um, and this is due to the fact that Lorenzo was explaining. So at each timestamp, uh, it has to compute, again, the covariance matrix of the residuals and re-estimate the state uh, as many times as the number of identified bad data. Um, nevertheless, independently of the adopted state estimation process, the overall computation time is always below 120 milliseconds, which is compatible with most real-time applications. Um, to conclude, we would like to show you uh, the graphical user interface of the developed state estimation process uh, that is currently up and running in the control room of the utility of Lausanne um, in parallel to their SCADA system. So as you can see, uh, the user can monitor in real time the estimated active power flows uh, in all the lines and in all buses, as well as the system estimated frequency. Um, and of course, also more interesting performance indicators. So for instance, um, the voltage profile in all buses uh, in terms of magnitude and phase angle. So here we compare the three phase measured values, namely the stars and the estimated values, which are the dots uh, connected by the solid line. Um, as you can see, for instance, bus six, uh, so here is characterized by bad uh, voltage magnitude measurements that are correctly filtered out by the state estimation process. Now, the two central graphs refer to the bus injected power profiles. And as you can see from the top graph, the system is quite balanced in terms of active power. Uh, whereas in the bottom graph, we were able to discover quite some imbalances from the reactive power point of view. And uh, finally, um, on the right, we are also able to estimate the line power flows as well as the line uh, power losses. Um, so to conclude, our paper has presented the implementation details and uh, the performance assessment of a state estimation process for the sub-transmission network of the city of Lausanne. Um, the WAMPS architecture comprises 15 PMUs, um, fiber optic telecom network, a phasor data concentrator, and state estimation. Um, we saw that network parameter errors uh, can badly affect the results of the uh, linear WLS estimator uh, that flags some measurements as bad data, uh, whereas the, um, the LAD is robust against them. Um, in the case of bad data, the computational complexity of the two estimators uh, is also comparable. Uh, finally, we assessed the, the timing of the overall state estimation process, uh, which is characterized by a latency in, your, in the order of 100 milliseconds, which is therefore compatible with uh, real-time applications. Um, we would like to thank you for your attention and to answer if there are any questions. Okay, uh, thanks, uh, Asia and Lorenzo. <clears throat> we have actually uh, a couple of questions. Uh, let me uh, start with the first one. Uh, actually, the first uh, <clears throat> person has two questions. The first one is, is the 0.2% accuracy still too poor for voltage estimation? Uh, because the voltage fluctuation is very small compared with uh, the measurement error in distribution grids. Yes, uh, it, it is true the uh, voltage differences between uh, the buses of this grid that we observed are um, much lower than the accuracy of the sensor. So it's uh, difficult just without the state estimator, but just with the measurement um, uh, to uh, correctly uh, see the voltage differences uh, in magnitude or in phase between two buses. That's why a state estimator is very useful to estimate them more, more correctly. Okay. Uh, the second question is about the formulation. How do you derive the linear model? Is it derived by Taylor expansion? Actually, uh, the objective of uh, using uh, phasor measurement units only 
uh, is exactly to have a, a perfectly linear model between um, that link the measurements with the state variable. So we, uh, it is uh, inherently linear. We didn't use Taylor expansion. Okay. Uh, and then the second uh, person, uh, uh, the, the question reads like this. Currently, it's not realistic to have PMU only estimator in sub-transmission and distribution networks. When a mixed measurement scheme consistent of both RTU and PMU devices is used, which among WLS and LAV methods would you operate more efficiently? Mm -hmm. So first, uh, uh, I would like to state that uh, uh, with the deployment of uh, phasor measurement units also at lower voltages that is happening right now and will be more and more in the future, we are actually seeing some portion of, of the network that are directly observable only with phasor measurement units. So sometimes they, it can be used all, also a PMU only estimator. For the cases where also RTU's uh, uh, measurements have to be um, have, to, have to be used in the state estimation process. Uh, this is uh, for sure a, a good question uh, to, to be answered in future works uh, to see uh, the performance of WLS and LAV um, in, uh, in distribution networks where there are also pseudo measurements because until now they have been tested mainly for transmission. Okay. Um, I believe that's all the questions we received, uh, posted. Uh, I don't have a question, but I just have a comment actually, which was uh, related to that slide you had on, uh, where you mentioned that uh, LAV doesn't have this problem with the leverage measurements, mm -hmm. uh, but probably the same comment is true for the WLS, since you are using the same measurement model. Am I right? Actually, yeah. The yeah, measurement so model is exactly the same. Yeah. Yeah. If, uh, okay, if there so is this, you, you, we scale the, the metric sage, uh, then uh, it, it becomes uh, not sensitive to, to leverage measurements. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to uh, clarify that. Okay, well, I, I think uh, that's all the questions we have, um, and we are done with all the presentations. So I would like to first thank all the presenters for the uh, very informative and enjoyable presentations. And I also would like all the attendees for attending the session. Uh, and now officially the session is uh, closed. Thanks again and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.